Hi, this is Margo. This is Wednesday evening, July the 10th, 2019, 7.01 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. There is a tropical storm hitting the Gulf Coast of the United States. We're going to look at that, Tropical Storm Barry, and then we're going to follow up on earthquakes that are going on around the world. So I hope everyone is doing as well as possible and staying strong through these very trying times for everybody. So what we're looking at, this is the United States on NASA Worldview from today. And if we zoom in, the area we're looking at is this, this system that fills up most of the Gulf Gulf of Mexico and the, the clouds are already coming onto land. It's already raining there in Louisiana and the, the system is becoming more and more well formed. I have an article. This is from AccuWeather from July the 10th. <clears throat> And it says, up to two feet of rain to deluge Gulf states as Barry brews offshore. So here's their video where they talk about it. So I'll just read this. On Wednesday, the National Hurricane Center issued a hurricane watch for most of the coast of Louisiana. A budding tropical storm over the northern Gulf of Mexico may reach hurricane strength and is likely to produce flooding rains and possibly a damaging storm surge with landfall between central Louisiana and the upper Texas coast early this weekend. The system destined to become Tropical Storm Barry and perhaps the Atlantic's first hurricane of the 2019 season will swing out and remain over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico long enough to gather enough moisture for heavy rain, enrage seas, and whip up high winds. It could dump as much as two feet of rain in some places. The looming storm prompted Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards to declare a state of emergency on Wednesday, which he announced in a post on Twitter. Twitter. <coughs> And here's his, his tweet that came out. <clears throat> AccuWeather meteorologists believe this system will become a tropical depression on or before Thursday and tropical storm Barry by Friday. Barry will become a hurricane prior to making landfall on Saturday, he added. But, you know, according to this, it looks like it's already raining there, so... Um, I guess it, it doesn't have <clears throat> all the parameters for a hurricane yet. It's still gathering speed and, and force and everything. The water temperatures in the north northern Gulf of Mexico are in the middle to upper 80s Fahrenheit. So um, it's the torrential rain is what they're most concerned about and the flooding. So here's their their infrared goes east satellite image. <clears throat> right now it's at a level two designation and is based primarily on the amount of flooding that may arise over a broad area due to a general ten to eighteen inches of rain. and an AccuWeather storm max of 24 inches. The storm is forecast to peak as a Category 1 hurricane based on the Cypher Simpson scale with maximum sustained winds of 75 to 95 miles an hour with a storm surge of 3 to 6 feet. So here's, here's where it's going to hit and spread out. And so we're seeing the hardest hit is going to be Louisiana and parts of Mississippi. And then um, 
that's localized and then widespread will go will cover all of Louisiana half of Arkansas and a lot of Mississippi and then uh, okay so this green was major localized is this light green where it's going to take in East Texas part of Oklahoma all of Arkansas um, then part of Missouri and then more of Mississippi and part of Alabama and part of the panhandle of Florida so it's a huge storm and so it's going to impact most of the coast it looks like <clears throat> they're gonna have um, tropical downpours through Thursday flash flooding rough surf plans altered and this is for the whole coast of, of Florida Alabama, Mississippi, and then this part of Louisiana. <clears throat> and then as it moves in, you know, it'll spread out more towards Texas and move toward, move inland. So I will leave the link below. And a lot of people are reporting on this. So, you know, I'm not the only one, but they do have um, one of the issues is they have a lot of oil and gas drilling there in the Gulf and they have a lot of offshore platforms and so they have to worry about those being damaged and then possible oil or gas going into the Gulf which is not good so there's that article I've also created an animation on Climate Reanalyzer for the accumulated precipitation for the next 10 days for the United States. And so um, we'll just run this movie. And so this is going to go starting with the 10th and it's going to go through the 20th. So here it is building, and then here's where it's hitting, and it's actually, according to this model, it's a lot, a lot of that rain, the high rains, rainfalls are spreading on up into Mississippi and Alabama, and the reds are into 12, and once you get into the orangey range, it's moving on up to the 24 inches now it's starting over so but you can see that it's not just this area that's getting affected the whole south is going to be getting some kind of rain it looks like and a lot of texas and the upper midwest and so it's a huge storm system it looks like that's go going to be spreading out and affecting the whole eastern part of the United States and maybe even possibly over west it looks like they're going to be well they've got another system coming up from Mexico so <clears throat> we've got that going on so people, if you're in the line of the storm, you need to prepare and take cover or evacuate or whatever you're going to do. But people living in these regions, you know, they, they sit in the first storm and you know, it's just a matter of how bad is it going to be and how wide a spread of an area is it going to affect. So we'll stop that now. Now, looking at earthquakes, here's the USGS for the last 24 hours. We're showing, this is all magnitudes, and we're showing 2,038 2, earthquakes worldwide. Of those, 116 or 2.5 magnitude or higher. 
and here in the so Southern California event area we're seeing 1758 right now and this morning you know I've been taking a screenshot every morning <coughs> here's the picture around the same time it's when the first first earthquake started and we're into this is day six this is day six since the first one the first group started and it all started with the 6.4 on uh, July July the 4th so here it is after six days <clears throat> six 24-hour periods and so in the last 24-hour period as of 907 this morning we were showing 1,763 earthquakes in the SoCal region and 2,111 worldwide. Well, since then, <clears throat> so we're showing a decrease in the overall number of earthquakes worldwide, a slight decrease, and about it's about the same on the number here in Southern California. It's showing 1,758. And this morning it was 1763 so it's showing five less now <clears throat> but if we add up for the six days the ones that I've been tracking after the first 24 hours we had a thousand and ninety eight in the second 24 hours we had 1429 the third 24 hours was 1307 <coughs> the fourth day was 1177 the fifth day was 1653 and then today was 1763 and so as of 907 this morning there were 8,427 earthquakes in this area. <coughs> and so that was not quite 12 hours ago that I took this screenshot. I've never seen anything like this. And so as as these earthquakes from yesterday fall off the map we have to have in order for to see an increase or d increase we have to see the same amount of earthquakes coming in in order to keep that number on the map <clears throat> so generally we're still seeing it Going, filling in this in this rift area from southeast up to northwest this is the Coso Junction area we're also seeing it clustering out to the west now this is California City and Johannesburg and we're seeing a move out there and they're also moving out to the east so it's, it's just the movement is spreading out. <clears throat> Oops. Let's just zoom in and take a peek at this right off the bat. So, <clears throat> if we're kind of zoomed out from it, then it, this whole area is just covered up. And as you know, there is a, a rift that's opened up. Um, you know, I expect us to see some magma coming up there sometime I don't know when but it's just I've heard some other people say that and that's my feeling as well that you can't have this many earthquakes and then a hole opening up in the division and it's pulling pulling the earth apart without having 
magma moving very close to the surface and and with it opening up like that that you know we're gonna see we're gonna see something with magma <coughs> that's my feeling on that <coughs> so let's go out oh hold on um let me pull up the tremor map. I don't think we had any Dutch sense that there were no tremors, but let me pull it up just to make sure. Hold on. Well, I'm glad I looked for myself. I don't know if it wasn't working when he was doing his show earlier today, but um, I normally show this when we look at the Pacific Northwest. But here are the tremors from yesterday for the Pacific Northwest there were 82 and they were all right up here on the Vancouver Island <coughs> so that's for the 9th and then for the 8th there were 109 and we showed that in the show last night where they were on the north end of Vancouver Island and then down here across from Seattle now it was on, it was one of these days. Okay, well, we don't have, oh, it looks like they do have data for the 10th. Well, this is new that they're showing tremors for the same day. So for today, so far, we're showing 99 tremors. So we'll look. We'll look more in detail at that. Maybe they changed it since they heard us complaining that, you know, they were a day late on their tremors. So, who knows? <clears throat> so, let's start. Let's look at what's going on around the planet. Well, first of all, this is the 2.5 magnitude or higher map. You can see more earthquakes popping up around the planet and <clears throat> I'm going to start over here um, oh there was a 5 what was it a 5.1 or 5.4 over here that I missed I forgot to talk about it was actually on on land on the Philippines that happened yesterday um, right at the end of my show so let's go let's look at that real quick so this is for the last seven days four and a half magnitude or higher and it was this 5.1 uh, begging to pay Philippines that came in at 556 last night <coughs> and so in the last seven days we're seeing five that were four and a half magnitude or higher right here. And they were all yesterday. <coughs> so something's going on there. So I'm going to go back to two and a half magnitude now. So Remember, these are all from the last 24 hours now. <clears throat> so let's start here in the Atlantic. <clears throat> There's a 5.2 north of Ascension Island on the red line at 2.43 this afternoon. <clears throat> now all the, all the times I'm going to tell you are Pacific time because that's my time zone. Then down here <clears throat> on the southern end, a 4.9 near Viscoy Island, South Georgia, and the South Sandwich Islands at 9.28 this morning, 115 kilometers deep. And then over here, just following our red lines around, a 5.1 at the Pacific Antarctic Ridge at 12 noon today. This was right across. Uh, this is the Ross Ice Shelf 
and Ross Sea here, and this is the western uh, western peninsula of the of the Antarctic. Now, let's come on up here. Here's one in the Mediterranean of 4.8 near Aia Galena, Greece, right near Crete, the island of Crete. It was in the sea at 3.57 this afternoon. Then here's one on land in Iraq of 4.3 near Sina at 3.56 this morning. Next, we've got one off the coast of Indonesia, off the coast of Sumatra, 4.7 near Sinabong at 11.52 last night. And then coming over here in the ocean in Indonesia, 4.4 near Koto, Kota Ternate at 1.30 this afternoon and a 4.5 at Bitung at 3.09 this morning. <coughs> and then down here, uh, 4.7 near Ohonua Tonga at 3.19 this morning. Coming on up to Japan was one just off the coast of 4.5 near Ofunato at 119 this afternoon. Then here's one off the coast of El Salvador of 4.8 near Libertad at 8.05 last night. <coughs> in South America at 4.7 near San Antonio de los Cobras, Argentina at 329 this afternoon, 182 kilometers deep. So that's all of the international earthquakes. Now let's go to all magnitudes and We'll look at Hawaii first. We're seeing 10 here today. 2 .7, 1 .8, 2 .4, 1 .7, 2 .4, 1 .7, 2.4, 1.7, 2.4, 1.8, 1.7, 1.8, 1.8, and 2.2. So the largest was the 2.7 it looks like <coughs> near Pahala so it's still moving you know things are still happening there hasn't stopped now down here in the Caribbean we're seeing three here today at 1.7 2.5 and 3.0 so a little bit of movement down there. Now let's look at Alaska. We're showing 107 here today, which is average. Alaska has, usually has between 50 and 100 a day. That's for all magnitudes. And we're showing nine that are two and a half magnitude or higher. So let's take a peek at those first. We've got two at Nikolsky, a 3.3 and a 3.8. Next is a 3.2 near Akutan. Then <coughs> <coughs> we have two <coughs> two near Kodiak <coughs> 3.7 and a 2.7 so these are definitely higher 
We've got three here at Sterling, a 3.8, 3.2, and a 3.3. So that's getting higher. Here's a 2.7 Redoubt Volcano. And that's it. We saw those. So that's all of them two and a half magnitude or higher at Alaska. So we've got a lot of small ones then filling in in between everything. So we're seeing, here's the Cook Inlet, here's the Redoubt Volcano area, here's this cluster at Sterling, here's Anchorage, <coughs> here's a 2.0, <coughs> <coughs> Here's an ice quake, a 1.6, and so we're seeing these small ones or smaller ones. Here's a 2. Point, a lots of lots of two points. Uh, here's that 2.7 at readout. Here's a 2.3. So we're seeing like low twos. <coughs> and a lot of ones moving on up here at Kobuk we've got 15 here today so that's that's kind of an average number those oh, sorry those are in the ones range there <coughs> here's a 2.3 at no attack and we've got some more, some little, some clustering going on up here at Koktovik and Arctic Village. We're showing nine here today, and the highest one is this 2.4. Now let's come on down into the lower 48. <coughs> So remember that we've got 1,759 down there in the event area. So it's showing 1903. So let's see. 1759. Oh, wait. Cancel. Nine. Okay. 1905 minus 1759 so we've got 146 in the lower 48 in addition to the ones down in the event area so we had one in South Carolina a 1.4 near Winsboro Mills at 106 this morning we don't see them here very often in South Carolina. Here in Oklahoma, we've got seven. Uh, 1 1.9, 1.7, 1.7, 1.4, 2.3, 1.8, and 2.2. And I thought I saw something. This 1.7 was a quarry blast near Owasu, Owasso. So we're not really seeing any big ones over to the east, so you know, the pressure is still building there in the event area. Here in Arizona, we, we've got three of 0.1, 1.5, and a 1.4. We've got a 2.2 at Manti, Utah. Here in the Yellowstone area, it's pretty quiet. We've got Three quarry blasts and one earthquake. We've got a 2.0 at Lincoln. That's the earthquake. That came in at 9.56 this morning. And a 1.6 quarry blast at Townsend. 
a 1.5 choriplastic Butte and a 1.0 choriplastic Virginia City. I guess they think they're going to make some more earthquakes by doing that. And they might. You never know. Now coming on up into the Pacific Northwest there's this Vancouver Island and here's the Seattle area. So here's our tremor map. So let's look at yesterday first. <clears throat> there were 82 and they were all up here on Vancouver Island right down here on the southern end. And then today so far there are 99 and they've still got some on the island and then the tremors have moved down here northwest of Medford and then down here in Northern California in the um, looks like nor uh, near the Shasta and then some down here where is this? Redway. We've had earthquakes there. That's that's kind of north of the geysers is where those are. So we've got a lot of tremors up here. This is um yeah, here's Mount Shasta. So it's to the west, northwest of Mount Shasta. So, zooming in to Washington. Here's a 1.4 explosion at Coburg, Oregon. Here's a 1.4 earthquake at Warren Beach, Washington. Now we did see this, um, the tremors over here. Here's a 1.1 Royal City. One, uh, 0.7 at Morton and a 0.5 at Amboy. Now these are both near Mount St. Helens. Now right down here at Mount Hood, remember we had a cluster of 60 something last night well we've got some more today we've got 25 here today and they're still on this southern flank of Mount Hood <clears throat> and these are they're not huge I mean this there's a 2.0 here's a 2.1 2.0 And the rest are ones and under, so it's just, you know, makes you a little nervous to see, see a bunch of earthquakes on an old volcano swarming. Okay, here's a, oh, we saw that explosion. Now coming on down, now here's an earthquake north of Mount Shasta. This is in the Tremor area. If we look, see it's, it's in that range. <coughs> so that's a 1.8 near Mount Hebron. This came in at 128 this afternoon. Here, here's another one right at Lassen, a 1.1 near Mineral. I mean, it's like, it's part of the Lassen Volcano area, 1.1 1 .1 at 2.42 this morning. Here is a 1.5 near Alder Springs, there. One point nine Lake Pillsbury. <coughs> Here's a one point 
here at the geysers they're 37 here today that's kind of a high average high normal average but that's the lake pillsbury and these are these are ones and under <coughs> coming on down uh, 1.9 at Hartley 1.3 Crockett here's a 1.3 in the San Francisco Bay near Santa Venetia 1.3 at 11.33 this morning a 2.3 at Berkeley so they're they're getting on up there <coughs> coming down the San Andreas fault line a 1.8 at Day Valley at the Pinnacles, we've got a 2.2, a 1.5, and a 1.9. And then at Grapevine was a 1.4, 1.6 Lebec, 1.1 Ninosh. And in Southern California, minus, minus all of those at the event area. We've got 24. We've got a quarry blast near San Ysidro. 1.3. Here's a 2.1 near Redondo Beach. Let's see if it's anything down here is two and a half or higher. <coughs> No. So these are small, but it's showing movement. So it's not very many. I would expect to see more, frankly. And these are these are ones and under. Here's Glen Avon. There's five here today. Ones and under. You know, maybe it's shaking so much over at the event area. It's taking the pressure off of what's going on and normally goes on over here. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. Um, let's come back to the event area. We've got four down here in Southern Nevada. Small. We've got <coughs> six at Hawthorne. Uh, we got a 2.7 that came in at Hawthorne. That's larger than we normally see here. That came in at 9.34 last night. The others are small. Reno's clear. Pyramid Lake is clear. Up here, we have three at Battle Mountain today, a 1.8, 1.4, and a 1.3. Those, those happened by 5.38 this morning. So that's it for Nevada. Now at Mammoth Lakes, we're seeing 10 here today. This The highest one is this 1.9 at Tom's place. And the rest are ones and under. And then all that's left is the event area. <coughs> and we can see that it's it's still going along this line where the rip is from s southeast to northwest from Cyril's Valley and Ridgecrest up to the Coso Junction area. Now we've had some higher magnitude earthquakes here today. We've had some fours in fact. Here's two and a half magnitude or higher, 91 here today. So we've had lots of threes. Here's a 4.5 at Coso Junction. 
4.4 COSO junction. Um, I'll just call out anything that has a 4. Here's a 4.2 at Ridgecrest. 4.1 COSO junction. Four point one Coso Junction That's it. And the rest are threes threes in between two and a half and four. Now we're at 1763 here, and that's what we were at 907 this morning. Now it just went up one. So, is it going to be slowing down? I don't know. I don't forecast. I'm just showing you the earthquakes and the what's going on and here's a 2.1 at Lucerne Valley that just came in um, you know I don't I, I mean if people want to evacuate you know that's up to them that's on them and you know if they have the means and the wherewithal and they want to go somewhere further inland and away from this area and away from the water and the sea coast and just in case this um, this Cascadia collapses and something happens then they'd really need to get over the Sierra Nevadas in my mind and further you know, further away from all this stuff happening. Get as far inland as they possibly could. So, oh, I wanted to read an article. Oh, we've got some more earthquakes that just came in. Uh, 4.4 near. Fiambala, Argentina came in at 717 tonight. It was 145 kilometers deep. And a 4.9 at Tuol, Indonesia at 730 tonight, 128 kilometers deep. And a 2.1 at Valdez, Alaska, it looks like. I'm going to pause the recording while I get this. Well, actually, I don't have to pause it. Let's go to Google Chrome. I posted this on my Subscribestar page as a public post. And this was uh, from Robin Westenra. He's doing daily updates on what's going on with the earthquakes. This is uh, this was from last night. He posted this. And there's there's my earthquake video from last night, and there's a video about the fissure cracking. Um, uh, there's Dutch senses video. I think, yeah. Okay, I want to read this article. This is from Hal Turner. He's a radio show host. He's pretty. He he's in. He does a lot of sensational stuff, 
but you know he does have sources and he's been in the business for a long time and so I'm going to do my due diligence by sharing this article from Hal Turner that came out yesterday July the 9th and then people can make up their own minds what to do the Hal Turner radio show received a warning from a scientist who works at Caltech for the Division Office of Geological and Planetary Sciences. This person says that the recent large earthquakes and ongoing aftershocks, which now total above 6,000, well, we saw, what, 8,600 as of 9 o'clock this morning, <coughs> along with satellite GPS land movement monitors, proof that California is cracking into two pieces and the western piece will submerge into the Pacific Ocean. Oh, and Dr. Claudia Albers is always also saying that, that. She's saying that that's happening too. The person is screaming that people should evacuate California immediately his exact words were, quote, they're not going to warn people. There is not enough time to evacuate everyone. Get out now. The whole state is about to crack in two. Please listen, unquote. This person did not state when this alleged catastrophe is going to take place. This person did not name any particular location points within the state which would mark the location of such a catastrophe. This person did not provide any data sets, GPS maps, or other scientific data to support this claimed pending catastrophe. In short, this is nothing but a wild, unsubstantiated claim. I do not imagine that rational people would suddenly uproot their lives and evacuate without having any proof, evidence, or data. And I was saying that last night in my show, too, that it's hard to just get up and leave. But, um, you know, if it speaks to you and you have family or if you have a safe place and it's already ready, you know, if you, if you want to go ahead and relocate and make the move, if you've been thinking about it, you know, now might be a good time before it gets any worse and before you know if if things do get worse and then masses start trying to get out you won't be able to get out you literally will not be able to get out because the roads will be packed and if it's after anything has already happened you know the roads are going to be broken up It'll be hard to get anywhere. The infrastructure, you know, it'll be, you'll have problems. So, you know, my advice is if you're going to go, now would be a good time. If you're going, if you're thinking about doing, doing a move, sooner than later would be a good time. You don't want to go to the Yellowstone area because that could blow. But if that blows, we're all dead within. With, I mean, not we're all dead. A lot of people will be dead within a matter of hours. So, and that might not be the end of our troubles. You know, if this earthquake is being, if this is part of a covert war, which it's my theory that it is and I don't know who it's a war with I have my thoughts on it but if it is a part of <clears throat> if this whole thing coming down is part of a covert war then what better time for the enemy to come in and do more attacks than once once the infrastructure goes down and we're at our weakest then we would not be able to fight back so this may just be the beginning of our problems and there may be 
I mean, lots of people have had visions of bombs being dropped across America and you know, America being nuked in these end times. And I, I recently had the same vision and it was not only problems with California and Yellowstone, but there were bombs being dropped as well. And so I don't know that there is a safe place to go to. So you might just, you know, make your peace with with everybody and with with God and and just, you know, to say goodbye. And then if it happens, it happens. And then if it doesn't, then you've got you've got some more time to do whatever you're going to do and you've been spared and God wants you here doing something. That's how I see it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. My health is not good enough to go to move or to make any kind of road trips or anything. So, and there are lots of people in that, that situation, in which case you just got to make peace with where you're at <clears throat> and say your prayers and do a life review and get ready to, get ready to leave, leave this earth plane when it's time. And that's kind of my thought. But everybody's different, and, you know, I'm 65 years old, and I've lived a packed life. I've had a lot of experiences. I've followed my dreams and accomplished a lot. But the main thing is now I'm focused on spiritual because nothing material you know, we can't take anything material with us. We can't take material accomplishments with us. So, you know, it's the spiritual things and how we've treated people and what kind of life we've led that's going to be more important. If we've been when if we've been kind to others and to Mother Earth and to the animals and you know things like that. So those are my thoughts, and so I'm praying for everybody to do whatever they feel led to do, and that it's the right thing for you, and that it's for your highest good. So until next time, God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon. And as long as I'm here with infrastructure and electricity and internet, and I'm able to, I will be reporting. So until next time, go in peace, and I'll talk to you soon. Good night.